Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. For today's episode, I have a very special guest. Joining me from Stockholm, Sweden, is Avatarium guitarist Marcus Yadel, as we are going to be discussing Avatarium's new concert movie, An Evening with Avatarium. Marcus has played with a wide range of famous bands, including Evergrey, Royal Hunt, and the Doomsday Kingdom, amongst others. Along with his exceptional guitar skills, Marcus is also a US Grammy nominated and Swedish Grammy winning producer for his work on Candlemass's The Door to Doom album. He currently works out of Deepwell Studios in Stockholm, Sweden. So thank you for joining me here at The Lair, Marcus. Thank you, it's my pleasure. I must uh, say you have a really nice background there. <laughs> That's right, I've got my uh, new Avatarium album autographed here. Yeah, nice. Autographed and I'm not sure if this is the Captain America A that Leif drew on here or it's an Anarchy A or I'm not sure, <laughs> not sure what cool. that is, but it's a cool. That's their latest album, everybody. It's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm going to be leaving links in the description down below where you can go to uh, watch the new movie. You can buy the new movie. Uh, it streams from uh, get, uh, Solid Tango is the name of the, the website. There'll be links down below for $10. It was $10 US. You can stream it. You can download it and everything from high quality all the way down to a lower quality if you want to save space on your uh, computer. I'll also be putting links where you can get more information on Avatarium. All right, so let's get started. So Marcus, for those who might not be familiar with Avatarium, how would you describe the sound of the band? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> Avatarium started uh, with uh, me and Leif Edling from Candlemas. So, and, and the first album is totally, every, every song is written, the first two albums, is, every song is written by Leif Edling from Candlemas. So, so you can maybe, if you know about Candlemas, then you can, you will get a hunch and, uh, about <laughs> how it sounds. But it's, you know, of course, it's uh, influenced by Black Sabbath and this kind of doomish bands. And, uh, but at the time, we always wanted to, what we tried to make a little bit different, maybe from Calmas, is that we, from the start, tried to bring in like uh, a little bit more of the 60s flavor and some blues elements. And, a little bit more than uh, Canvas has it. So I think it's a little, you can see it's, it's a little bit more bluesy. And then it's uh, Janian Smith who's singing is, uh, she, she's also very like almost jazzy sometimes and a little bit folk, folkish and, uh, but with a touch of deal also sometimes. So, so I would, I would say like, if you take Black Sabbath and uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash, <laughs> might be somewhere in the ballpark, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'd agree with that. There's a strong 60s, 70s influence here, sound. Yeah. And uh, vocalist uh, Yenny Ann Smith has a very blueful, bluesy, soulful kind of delivery. And I believe I read a quote where Leif Edling called her the female Ronnie James Dio. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a big words of course but she she is really an extremely talented singer and she happens to be my wife actually but it's uh, but but i'm uh, i remember when i first uh, first heard her sing that i always was like moved by the way she sings so she's she she is especially you know I'm, I'm working with a lot of singers in in my studio as a producer and, and she's one of these few really special talents you know that you meet sometimes that you just can go in and do things make make a song you know sound so much better with just the way she approaches the song you know and the lyrics and everything so so she's amazing Ivan Langqvist is also one of these singers from Candlemas of course but but anyway so yeah so I'm, I'm happy to I'm very happy 
you know, about being in this band. And it's, we have to be really thankful for Leif Edling, of course. He's not a part of the band anymore. He wrote some songs for the last, latest album that you showed here, The Fire I Long For. So he's still, uh, you know, he's still a big inspiration and he's still writing some songs. But, he, but he's mainly focused on Canvas since Canvas is really, you know, working hard since their the door to doom album and they are they are they did they've been doing really really good you know with the grammy thing and all these things and they did a special guest tour with ghost and so cameras are doing doing so well now yeah album which is fantastic and really really well deserved so um so so he's mainly focused on that but you know um, he's one of my, you know, close friends, and I meet him a lot. And so we, he's always like, always around somehow, you know, one way or another. <laughs> he's a very strong standing person, standing on your shoulder, right? He's the little the, the devil, maybe on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when we write our own songs, me and Jan, Jan we, 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 of course, we try to make it our own style. We don't want to copy yeah. Leib's style. But it is a little bit like you said, it's like you have him on the shoulder and it's like, okay, I don't know, you know, what, what would he think about this? Or, you know, <laughs> you always have these thoughts, but I, but I, of course, it's, it's important for me and for us to stand on our, on our own legs and we, we must, you know, trust ourselves, you know, otherwise it's, and that's what he does. And that's what I learned from him because he's trusting, you know, his instincts and, yeah, feel, and that's what I think is really important as a songwriter. That's probably the most important thing I learned from him. You know, to just yeah. you know follow what you know what you feel, you know, and, and try to do do the best you can. You know, make the song as good as it possibly can. Yeah. So let's talk about your new concert movie, An Evening with Avatarium. Uh, yeah. What it what inspired you to uh, to film a concert and to and to put this out? Yeah. Uh, what inspired us? I, I actually gotta say that it's it's not just for streams. Also, you, you can download it and keep it forever. So that's how how we uh, you know what, what we decided to do because we we talked to our record label and they no one's hardly doing any DVDs anymore and. We felt we wanted to do like a physical product, so so what we did is people can download this, and then if they send us a mail, they will get a PDF cover and every and you can make your own um, <clears throat> official bootleg, so to speak. So you get like the cover with the information about the songs and where the song starts and blah blah blah. You get all the information there. Uh, <clears throat> I can go and get it and show you actually if you want to. Because I have it in, in the other room, but um, so that's what uh, that's how we how we sell it, so to speak. And the, the thing is, we were really lucky because this was the first show we did. Uh, we, re we released the album like really late 2019, last year, and then we had this first two shows in Sweden that was supposed to be like warm up shows. <clears throat> the first show was in Stockholm at a really nice venue called Nalen. It's like a really old, uh, old venue. The building is from like late 1800. And um, it, it was like, it was a lot of, you know, jazz bands and all these kind of like pop bands in the 60s and uh, they used to play there. It was like the place where everybody played like until like late 60s. <clears throat> beginning like in the 20s, 30s, 40s. And uh, <clears throat> and then it's, I don't know, it's, you know, it's been like other stuff going on there, but not, now they asked us, the promoter, if we want to play there because there's no, hardly no, no rock bands or metal bands playing there. So we got asked, and I always love that venue because it's, it's almost a little bit church-like. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's a really beautiful and old venue and a lot of history, you know, a lot of vibes. So, um, yeah, so we said, Let, let's, let's do this show. And, uh, and then uh, another company called Black Box asked us if they could film it. 
because they are they were like building up this streaming thing. Yeah. So they they asked us, they said, okay, if we come and film the concert, five cameras, and then we were like, yeah, of course, that's that's a great thing. So we did a, a live stream with it, which went really successful. It was like a, a lot of a lot of people who watched that actually, but then it was just a sound from you know from the from the board, which is a little bit not so sophisticated, I would say, because you you know you, you, don't, sure. you don't hear it as, as as it is in the in the in the hall, so to speak. So so what we did, we recorded. Uh, luckily, we recorded all the channels like multi-channel recording with the audio and then and then this we had that okay let's see what we do with that you know you never know and then this COVID-19 shitstorm kind of happened yeah. you know? so all of a sudden it's like okay no concerts no shows no anything we were like like everyone else has been like you know it is it's crazy and um, but then we thought, okay, we have this thing. And we we are you know we we want to show people <laughs> what we are up to, and we have we have this concert film that's like the just right before the outbreak of the COVID nineteen pandemic. So so what we did we we reworked it like with the with the film, and then we did a mix with the audio. Victor Stian Quist. Quist our sound engineer did a great mix on it. And I still haven't listened to the concert because I don't like to <laughs> listen to my own stuff that much. I'll tell I'm... you, it's really good, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, now, now I have it. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, when, when he, he, he started to do the mix, like on, on his, he just decided to do it without anyone asking him because he had the multitracks. And then he, he started to send me stuff. And I was like, mm, yeah, maybe, you know, um, let's see, I'll listen a little bit. And it's like, okay, maybe, you know, okay, I try to, you know, little louder guitars, maybe. You know, yeah, like, turn the guitar <laughs> <on>. <laughs> You know, the, uh, that old thing that we always like and uh, whatever. And, but uh, all of a sudden he sent me like a mix of two or three songs. And I was like, this actually sounds quite good. And, uh, and then I went to his studio, he lives in another city, so I went to his studio and we went through the whole concert from beginning to an end, like in one day. He was kind of finished and I was like, okay, we want to focus on the Hammond playing there or we want to hear the drum part there, you know, like these small things. The mix was kind of done, but you know, just these small things. And that was the first time I, I listened to the whole concert without picture and I was like scared when I went there. Every song was like, I oh, hope we did, hope we played nice on this one because you know the first show is always kind of yeah. shaky. That's that's how it always is. But for once, <laughs> you know, uh, we every, everybody, you know, the whole band performed amazing. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. So it's like, you, of course, you, you can you can feel like a little tension the first two songs if you if you know it. But doesn't it's it's not uh, it's not in a bad way, and uh, and the lo the longer you see the concert and you know with the lights and everything, everybody everybody like light engineer, everybody's like getting more and more into it, and the concert just grows and grows, and the band is getting more and more comfortable. It's good from the start, but it ends like really really good, and so I, I think we're really really lucky that we performed so well. And uh, we had a great light engineer, and we had a, a great sound engineer. You know, there was, there was some sometimes just everything kind of works. And that, this was one of these days. Yeah, <laughs> and it was recorded, which never happened. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so we're really happy about it. and We're really proud of, about it. We, you know, usually when you when you talk about, there was actually a lot of people, you know, friends who told me after the show. It's like it sounded like you've been on tour for. A, a month, yeah, two months, it sounded so good, and I was like, ah, I don't think so, but it actually did. And th yeah. then you can also hear because we have a new drummer, Harbo. He used to play in, on the Doomsday Kingdom album that me and Leif did as well, and he's also a great friend of mine and an amazing drummer. And the band where we are now is like it's such a great chemistry that I never felt with another band actually. 
and I, I think you can hear that. It's like it's, it's a band on like everybody's on their toes and everybody's like on fire, you know. And so I'm, I'm really proud of this live concert, and I really hope that a lot of people will see it. And uh, the comments this far that we've been getting, like reviews and uh, mails from the fans, and there's a lot of people like really excited about it. And um, the pictures also, you know, it's a lot of great footage, you know, as well. So it's, it's, it's a good way to experience Avatarium where we are today, I would say. So I'm really happy about it, that we, that we can share this, you know, thing with, <clears throat> with, with people. And I hope as many people as possible will, will see it. And, um, you know, there are also some, you can, you can find some clips on our YouTube channel, actually. You can maybe put a link to the Avatar okay. YouTube channel. Okay. So, um, so you can see, you know, if you, if you have second thoughts, or if, if you're not <laughs> sure if you want to spend the $10. <laughs> Nobody out there should have second thoughts. This looks awesome. The camera work is great. There's multiple cameras moving around with close-ups and, and far back shots. I especially love the, the light show. Uh, so a complaint that I have sometimes with, with uh, live DVDs is, is that when the light show is changing, like every two seconds, the lights are just, you know, going crazy. But for this, what I really like is, is for uh, a good part of the show, uh, for each song, it's just kind of one solid color. And yeah. it gives this real atmosphere and mood to the stage. And you throw into that this historic venue that you were uh, describing to us and just the whole thing with the smoke and the solid colored lights and the subtle but creative light changes and the great camera angles. It just really makes for a really awesome uh, live uh, DVD. And the sound quality is excellent also. I, when I watched it, I had headphones in and uh, everything sounds great. Uh, sometimes I think it could be a little tricky when you only have one guitar in a band and you're recording it live. If you're not careful, sometimes people will mix things so that everything is right dead in the middle yeah. and it has a real mono uh, sound to it but this is done really nice where the guitar is in the middle but the keys are spread out a little bit the drums are spread out a little bit so it has a really sort of live open feel to it you can hear the audience it feels like you're sitting out there in the audience i love between the songs you can even hear people you know, yelling. And there, there's one guy, especially in my left speaker, that between every song, for the first like three or four songs, he's yelling, rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he yells, and I even, I even wrote it down, I, it was somewhere in there. Right. He, he, he yells, uh, louder, harder, slower. <laughs> yeah. Which I think is just great. So it feels like you're right there in the audience, which is the yeah. way a live recording should be. Yeah. Like it, it reminds me of like a 70s live recording where you yeah. feel like you're, you're in the audience. It feels like it's live with the visuals and everything. It's and that's absolutely- why you know, That's what, why you know it, it is live because you can use a lot of the audio microphones, like the audience microphones on the room. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I'm gonna <laughs> with the guy. But, but you know, so you, you can like, since we didn't do any, since it's every, everything is con from the concert, then we can use a lot of the audience microphones, so to speak. Yeah. So then if you mix them in a good way, then, then you get that kind of experience. Yeah, but also, Dorothy and Christy did a really great work with the mix on us. So. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, so, so the concert is an hour and 33 minutes. And to my count, you performed 14 songs. So how do you go about picking a set list for a longer show like this? Did you have in mind this is going to be filmed? Did you make, you know, pick anything special because you knew it was going to be filmed? Or so how do you go about picking the different yeah, songs for a longer a set? Good question. It's a good question. Well, we, we, didn't, we didn't know it's going to be filmed when we did the um, uh, set list, I think. I'm not sure, but I don't think we, you know, what we focus on is, the audience that are there, there that particular evening, that's, that was our concern. We wanted them, you know, like everybody to get as great experience as possible. And then uh, the film and everything, that was just like, we know it's gonna happen, was supposed to happen, but you know, don't think about that, you know, on the 
day of the concert, so to speak, because then you get even more stressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so I just try to focus on the, you know, the audience that bought their, pick, tic bought their tickets and are, you know, joining us that particular night. And I think it's just like, you know, it's a little bit like when you, you, when you try to make a, a vinyl, you know, you try to build and you try to have like some kind of movement, you know, like it's a little bit the same, but maybe even more, a little bit more complex because, you know, you want, you want to grab people's attention from the start, of course, but you don't want to give them all the fireworks, you know, directly because you need to save something if you like if you start everything like 100 percent there's nothing more to give so you, you want to like, yourself yeah yeah you want the climax to happen in the end that's that's like the, the what is it the arch <laughs> arc, yeah for sure arc, and there's yeah. there is a nice arc to this to this show you you, you come out I, I love the opener of uh, Voices, Voices in Rubicon, a really great one to opener. And I, I especially love in Voices, and maybe you can take this chance too to mention the other guys in the band. I love in Voices the uh, Hammond, or, the Hammond uh, keyboard solo on that. It sounds like an exploding Hammond <laughs> organ on the studio recording. That's what I just thought, like you just took a Hammond and just cranked it up to, to 11. And I was wondering, how is this going to sound live? And it sounds... Fantastic, man. It sounds just like on the record. So tell us who else is in the band and yeah. uh, tell us about, uh, did he have a Leslie uh, speaker on stage with him? Yeah, not a Leslie on this one, actually. Uh, this is Richard Nilsson. And, uh, and he's, uh, when we, on the albums, we use like uh, Leslie and, uh, you know, the, my Marshall amps and everything. Okay. But here, here we actually, uh, he just used his, uh, he has, he just uses keyboards, you know, like, like he has. And it's, it sounds really, really good. Yeah, it does. So, um, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it was reamped uh, afterwards. Um, most possibly not, because I don't think he has the possibility to do that in the studio. Uh, Victor mixed it. But it's, um, I mean, Rickard, he's like, you know, some players are, Rickard is, is one of a kind, you know, keyboard player, I must say. So it's like, you know, some guitar players pick up a guitar and it just, it can be a crappy guitar and it sounds amazing anyway. He's that kind of guy, you know, we give him something to play on, it's gonna, it's gonna sound amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but he's also very particular about his sounds, of course. He's working a lot, you know, with everything. So, uh, but Rickard is, is amazing, oh, you know, He's also an old friend of mine. So both him and, uh, and Harbo, the drummer, we've been known each other for a long time. So I'm also happy to have both these guys in the band because it also gives, they're great musicians, but also, you know, it's good to have close friends, you know, around you because it can be a lot of stress playing live and being a musician or whatever, you know, there's, there's a lot of stress involved. So it's good to have like a solid, <laughs> company around it that you can trust yeah, yeah. We, we also have Mats Rydström the bass player is also like he, he he's such an amazing bass player I haven't I haven't I started to know him actually a few years ago because I saw him play like I don't know five years ago or something and then I when I saw him play bass I was amazed you know because he's such a he has so much energy and he's such a great such a great bass player and and uh, since Leif never played live with us and we had Anders Ivers for a while and lives in Gothenburg which is like 450 kilometers from where we live so we needed like someone closer to be able to rehearse and do all this stuff and uh, and then uh, when Mats came up it was you know like a gift <laughs> was heaven sent, you know, to get this amazing bass player. So uh, to me, and, and the, the drummer already mentioned Harbo, Andreas Harbo, you want some, but we call him Harbo, and he, he's like, he's the kind of drummer that can play everything, you know. But, he, but he's, he's, he's really, you know, 
musical and thinks about the songs. So he's he's uh, he's amazing, and uh, all the guys are amazing. And then we have Jan Jan Smith on top of that who's singing great. So it's like to me, it's, this is a dream band. This is like I managed to put together, you know, my favorite musicians in a band that I know. Yeah. And uh, here we are, and um, you know, I just hope we can, can continue for a while because, it's, and uh, of course, it's a, a little bit, you know, when we have this great company and then uh, we can tour, but you know, things will be different, and then it, it's just we still can meet and rehearse and, and play music together and write new songs or all this kind of stuff. So. We, I'm not going to complain because there, there's a lot of people that are being really, you know, struck by this COVID-19 in a terrible way. So, so we, we're we're surviving. But as a band, it's it's hard. If you can't play live, it, of course, it's hard to to be able to continue because that's how that's how a band survives <laughs> to play live. So, so there's a lot of bands that are, you know, of course have uh, kind of complicated situations now, but you know, everybody do the best they can and, and um, you know, hopefully something good will come out of it. There will probably be a lot of good albums coming out in a year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I sure. would say. For sure. But yeah, the band sounds fantastic. And of course, like you mentioned, uh, uh, Yenny Ann Smith sounds amazing with her uh, bluesy soulful singing on this on this concert and i was also really impressed with the background vocals i've seen you guys before i don't remember there being background vocals but there's some really great background vocals on I this started, started to use that more a little bit more and uh, everybody are capable you know so so we, uh, we put a little bit of that in and on the new album there are more like background vocals and stuff. Actually, uh, Stefan Bergen is doing some background vocals on the, on the last album, which is an amazing singer, Swedish singer. And um, so I, th I think that's going to be more and more of that on the, on the, on the next album as well, actually. It's, it's nice, you know, to blend in some harmonies now and then. Oh, yeah. It sounds great live. It adds like another dimension to it's everything. Thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a good thing because we, we are like five guys in a band. You, of course, we can use a lot of dynamics, you know, with our instruments. But as you say, it's like one more. You can add like one more level, you know, if you put in some background vocals. And uh, they all also sound uh, <laughs> surprisingly good. <laughs> <laughs> about everything I'm like how can uh, how can it sound so good you know but everybody it's, it's a great band you know but it, you know there's a lot of things that can go wrong on a concert and that that's yeah. why and background know. vocals are one of them and at least you were honest about it like I love when I when I'm listening to a, a live recording watching a live DVD and there's five guys on stage and the, the, the chorus comes up in the song and it sounds like Queen, you know, yeah. background. It sounds like there's a choir and you're just like, wait a minute, there's only one other guy at a microphone here. What's going on? But this is an That's honest my, live recording, oh, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, being a one guitar band, how do you approach the guitar parts in a live setting? You have the studio recordings where there's other guitar things going yeah. on how do you think about and how do you approach the guitar in a live setting you have to change your parts a little bit to, to cover different things yeah it, it, it is uh, it is a little bit tricky because you want to have the, the same vibe as on the albums and sometimes on the albums it's like eight guitars you know playing at the same time 20 guitars you know. <laughs> not often it's, sometimes it's just one or two guitars but you know i i love to work with layering guitars and stuff you know i i, I love the daniel lanois school thing with like as a producer you know would like do like a lot of layering stuff that kind of like a keyboard or choirs or whatever 
that kind of can be uh, happening in the background. So I do a lot of these smaller things that you maybe not don't notice when you just listen to the album. But the main guitar, um, you know, I, I, I use a lot of different guitars live, look a lot of different tunings. That's one of the things. I have several amps. Uh, I think I use two amps on this uh, on this live. Uh, so I blend sounds, I blend amps, I blend uh, guitars, I I don't know, you know, it's, it's just um, <clears throat> one, one of the ways I, 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 one of the ways I approach guitar is I, I like when, a, when, it, when it sounds big and when it sounds fat, so, so I kind of learned uh, some tricks <laughs> how, to, how to make one guitar sound yeah, you have a very unique. Well, maybe more than you kind of uh, have your really your uh, really unique guitar sound, and uh, for me, I would kind of describe it as like Leslie West's guitar sound, maybe with like a little bit of a modern uh, mm -hmm. Leslie West dialed up just another notch nice. higher. I hear yeah. a Leslie West influence in there. Am I That's right? A compliment. I love Leslie West. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you've got an, uh, it's a kind of an old fat, old school sound, but yet it, it, it has a foot in sort of modern sound too. It's a nice blend of, of uh, both things. Yeah, but you know, I'm experiencing, doing a lot of experiment. I'm experimenting a lot with uh, guitar sounds and uh, I have the opportunity to do that in the studio as well, you know, since I'm, I'm working in the studio and there's like, the, I actually haven't toured much the last years because I we got a kid like two and a half years ago so I haven't so, so I haven't been I've been mainly working in my studio in the last three years and uh, there's been a many many late nights you know when I'm <clears throat> trying out different sounds but I always love to do that and uh, since I started to you know work more as a producer like six years ago or whatever it was I, I, I you know I, I could find even more time for that interest so to speak so because it's it's you know yeah you have to do some thinking and some work to get it to get a guitar sound the way it's supposed to sound <laughs> i think sure. oh that sounds great on the uh on the recording and uh one uh one spot in the show where uh where you really get to stretch out is pearls and coffins where uh in the if in the concert, uh, Marcus takes it out at the end and and has a great extended guitar solo where he you're doing all these bluesy big bends and it's just you're really getting into it. So is that something that uh, do you have that structured out beforehand or you, do you just go for it and it varies yeah. night by night? Well, it happens in the you know in the moment kind of things. It's like. I know, you know, it started to happen on the last tour that we started to do this long solo. And then it's like, but you, you know, you never know. And I never know what it's going to be. It's like totally improvised. And uh, it's also actually quite weird key to play in because it's like, I think that song is like, because I'm playing a regular tune guitar. So it's like B flat, which is like, <laughs> like a chill, chill key for a, uh, playing guitar songs, yeah because you can't use any loose string but anyway it's that's also maybe sometimes you know it's good to do things different because you come up with different ideas but that's you know i couldn't tell you i, I watched it like one or two times now since we've been working with the with the film uh, maybe three times even are you still oh yes today yeah <laughs> but, but it's uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, you know, really what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's really like, you know, emotional stuff and um, just whatever happens. And uh, I think w w this solo turned out good. And, and when, when these kind of improvised solos turn out well, then it, I think it's when you kind of reach some kind of zone where it's like things just happen and um, you're not like, you don't think what you're gonna do, you know, next, next yeah. bar, whatever. It's just like you get some kind of flow, and I don't know. It, it, it was a good uh, vibe, and it 
turn out well. And uh, I think it's, 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 it's also, you know, you, you see a different side from me and have a term that you maybe don't see, that you maybe don't kind of experience from just listening to the albums, you know. Yeah, no, it's great. No, I think it's it's absolutely awesome. It's a highlight of the the show for me. Uh, it's it's a real in the moment type of thing, and that's what live recordings are supposed to be about, right? Just capturing that special moment, and I think that that really does. Uh, you also do a cover of "In My Time of Dying," which yeah. is an old blues song reinterpreted by Led Zeppelin. Uh, what inspired you to pick that song as a cover? Exactly. We did that song, like we have, we've been doing like a version, a little bit different version of that song earlier on. And I, I think it's, because Zeppelin did it, I think it's like an old blues or old gospel or something like that, traditional song, which is, you know, it's, it's really, of course, a moving lyric and uh, it kind of suits well with, the other songs we are working with and um, I, I think because I think Bob Dylan did a version of it as well I think that was the version I kind of heard and when I was like hmm maybe we can do something like this I think our own our, our version is very different from all the other versions I ever heard yeah and uh, <clears throat> that was also like because we got this 12 string guitar the whole strum that I used and, and we started to like play the song I think maybe we just started to like you know I started to play it and then I started to sing the song and then we thought like maybe we should have this in the set because it's also like something different it's just me and Jenny Ann and every, every night we, we, I think we started that on the last tour as well the Hurricanes and Halos tour and uh, that's also like this solo you talked about there's also a moment in the show when it's like we don't know how this version is going to be because it's like me and Jan Jan interacting with each other and I'm doing something and she follows and she's doing something and I'm following her so it's like this version is like it's different from all the other versions we did of that song of course you know they are alike but it, it's always different and that was also a version that when I listened to it I was like I remember I told Jan Jan like wow we did a great version of that in my time of dying <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> because no one remembers how we did it, you know. But she also agreed when she listened to it. And uh, so, yeah. And, you know, it's, um, I always like, you know, I, I like, I love old gospel music. I love all this, you know, Swedish folk music or folk music from all around the world, whatever. And uh, all, some of these old gospels, like little darker gospel songs, like d dealing with kind of the same issues that, we are dealing with a lot with preparing on life and death and yeah. afterlife or whatever, maybe in a more like Christian way or whatever, but it's, it's, it's interesting and it's, um, it's, it's like the eternal question, you know, like meaning, meaning of life, what's going to happen in the afterlife, you know, all these kind of things that's like, that it deals with. It's, it's interesting and it's, uh, you can, you can, talk about it <laughs> forever until you die and then you maybe you will know <laughs> yeah. or not I don't know but uh, um, so it's uh, and, and as I said it's, it's like being able to put in I, I'm, I really like when I can blend heavy music with blues and uh, folk influences and uh, these kind of elements when, when I can bring this in you know then, then, then I'm. I think I'm the most happy as a musician, and uh, and and also these like lyrical elements that kind of gives it also even more of an edge. What do you want to call you? How you say it? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and that's what I think makes Avatarium unique is it's that blues influence and the folky blues mixed with the doom and the heavier stuff. So. So fans of the band are going to love this movie. It's got all of my favorite uh, songs on it. Uh, a lot of stuff from the new album. 
uh, Shake That Demon, uh, one of my favorite Avatarium songs to fire I long for is on here. Moon Horse is on here. I especially love the encore. The band leaves the stage and Yenny Ann comes back with just the piano and does Stars They Move, mellow piano and her beautiful voice. So the movie is just absolutely awesome. I encourage everybody to go out and uh, buy this. You can stream it, you can download it. All the links will be below. I'll also include Avatarium's YouTube channel. But before we let Marcus go, I've got a couple rapid fire questions for you, okay? Yeah. I know you gotta leave in a few minutes, but here we go. All right, uh, a couple of your favorite late 60s, 70s rock albums. Okay, a couple. Uh, you know, I, I love, lately I've been listening so much to Cross Business and Nash, like the last years. I, I kind of, I always knew about them, but I started to find out about them, like, <clears throat> I started to really listen a lot to them, like, seven years ago or something. I've been listening a lot since. So I would say Cross Business and Nash, you know, the obvious late 60s, of course, is like, you know, Sabbath and the Zeppelin and all this kind of stuff. What is goes without saying <laughs> i think <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, uh, but but you mentioned leslie west i would say mountain i love mountain and across with his nash and uh, you know uh, i love Jimi hendrix you know what can of i course. say you know band of gypsies album the band of gypsies album is like one of my yes. you know uh, favorite I... albums I did a video of my uh, favorite guitar moments, and one of my favorite guitar notes of all time is in Machine Gun, off yeah. of the Band of Gypsies, where he plays that first note. He he just bends up, yeah. yeah, wow. And it hangs there for like like a minute, and it's that song is just some of the most amazing guitar work out there. Okay, tell us. I think you're also a Richie Blackmore fan, right? Yeah, really. I love okay, uh, give me give me a, a one or two of your a couple of your favorite Richie Blackmore guitar moments. Guitar moments. Uh, well, you know, one of the things that it really influenced me, without kind of almost knowing it, was has been his slide guitar playing actually, because I I noticed when I started to play slide, I noticed it's like okay, it sounds a little bit like. Richard Blackmore, but of course I have it in my DNA. I've been listening to so much to it. Uh, <clears throat> that would be that, um, you know, I, I particularly like, you know, the Mark II, but there are some really cool, uh, like, things like live, uh, I think I, I think it's like from, um, uh, with comedy like the news actually, when they do like, burn or something you can just hear like <clears throat> he's like stepping on a pedal and it's like and you're like, <sighs> and <I was> like <laughs> or when he's being mistreated you know these kind of sounds you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but blackmore is like you know and uh, one album that i really love is actually fireball it's like yeah. it's a lot of uh, really cool guitar work and uh, sounds on that album as well but you know rich blackmore is so much stuff and, and the rainbow stuff you know if you talk slide you talk like, you know, all the, the balance stuff with when it's like catch the rainbow and all this kind of stuff is so beautiful. It's amazing, amazing guitar player in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I noticed on, last question, I noticed on your uh, biography there that uh, you had worked with Lee Kerslake. And yeah. as we know, Lee Kerslake just recently passed. Uh, would you like to say something about... <clears throat> Lee? Yeah, you know, I had the, I had the great honor to just play some shows with him a few years ago. So um, it was very, of course, very sad to hear about this, you know, that he passed away. And um, he's, well, when, you know, if, if I'm just talking about when, when I met him and when I played music, it's like, this is, these are some, there are some moments in life when you just, you, are, you meet a person and you, like, hanging with that person in two, three days makes you, you know, 20% better musician, just by talking, you know, to them. You know what I mean? So that was one of these experiences when I, we, we played together and I heard him play and he, he was, you know, he's one of my favorite drummers, all time favorite drummers, 
as a start. You know, the things he did with on the earlier Ossie Osborne, uh, Uriah what I like, what I love the most. But of course, the heap, Uriah heap things are also totally, you know, amazing. So, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm really, you know, thankful. He was such a nice and humble person, an amazing drummer. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, as a musician and as a producer, I learned so much from playing with him and hanging with him. So I'm so thankful for that. And I, um, I know he struggled for quite a long time before he passed away. Passed away. And so because my friend Stefan Bergen, he, he is a really close friend with Lee. And so he told me like, <clears throat> because I, I wasn't in contact with him personally, but there was a long struggle, but hopefully it's a, you know, a better place now and he you know we he's, he's one of the legends you know so uh, you know we are you know just respect and uh, an ama amazing uh, amazing musician and uh, i'm very happy that i got to meet him and get to play with him so yeah. yeah all right well i would like to thank you marcus for joining me here at the lair uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, like I said, below in the description for the video, I'll have the links for everything. Please go out, uh, buy uh, Avatarium's An Evening with Avatarium. It is amazing. You will love it. Uh, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've seen the video already. Let me know if you're a fan of Avatarium. Uh, let mm -hmm. me know what you think. Uh, and uh, make sure you hit... I'll read it too. Yeah. <laughs> make sure you hit like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Marcus. And Thank you very much. until we see everybody again, um, you know what, I'm going to have to twist Marcus's arm and get him on this show again so we can talk some more 70s rock and guitar because I have a feeling that we could go on for a while about that, that subject. <laughs> yeah. A glass right. of 70s guitars, you know. What I could go on all day about that, right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you again, and thank you, everybody. And until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal. Thank you, thank you very much.